we're live, everyone. Mm. Hi, guys. This is Thomas from Video Mantis. I'm here with Carrie Sheldon and Mary Hello. Jo Devaney. Nice to meet you. Guys, we're here today to talk about women in film, and we're live in the Video Mantis post studio. Thanks for sh coming up, guys. I know that last time you came, we were just doing audio podcasts in the middle of my living room apartment, yes. which uh, wasn't as nice as this. Well, and you were mid-move. Oh, my gosh. That was crazy, too. Yes. Go ahead and talk. You know what? I should have calibrated you, Carrie. Uh, testing one, two, there three. There we go. There we go. Mary Jo, how about you? One, two, three. There we go. Perfect. Okay. okay. How's that? How's that for everybody? Is yeah. that good? Okay. Mm -hmm. good. Great. Everybody good. from home. It's good for you. You guys can hear us? Good. Okay. Give us the, just, just tell us. Okay. Good By the way, we have us on uh, Facebook live here. So if we have any issues or whatever, talk to us and I'll have you guys kind of monitoring for me um, <laughs> if we need to. So yeah, but first, before we start on everything, guys, I, I need to talk about a very specific issue. Um, I'm a Facebook guy, but I'm also a Reddit guy. I love Reddit, and they have a lot of like filmmaking threads and sub-communities that you can be on. And today, I was seeing a, a post on Reddit, and it kind of bummed me out, because it was a picture of a sound mixer, a younger sound mixer, working in another state, not in Los Angeles, because I would have liter literally driven to the location and made it stop. Um, but it was a picture of him like getting into the trunk, being like, hey, guys, look at me. I'm cool. I'm getting into the trunk. And yeah, look, look, I want you to look well, at this face. Look at yeah. this face. Uh, this is so dangerous. It's, yeah, it's so dangerous. It's making me nervous talking about it. Yeah, it's really, really not worth it. We're making movies for a living. Mm -hmm. It's not worth your life. Absolutely. And that's absolutely what you risk the moment you get in the trunk. Anything can happen. There are so many videos on YouTube that you can see of like accidental things that were under the control of, of yeah. professionals where yeah. things go wrong yes. and people get hurt. And now you're going to put yourself in an unprotected car without a seat belt <laughs> with mm -hmm. lack of oxygen. Right. It, depending on uh, what? Uh, if you're ca how expensive the car is, it might be airtight, the trunk. Uh, I know this <laughs> because years ago I got in a trunk and I almost passed out because there was no oxygen. Yeah. You're also close to fumes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're it's horrible. Being, I mean, like, go sit on that exhaust pipe. You know, yeah. It's not a good place. It's yeah. not a good place to be, and it's not worth it. it. If somebody can't afford to have a process trailer and to do it the right way, well. or, or I don't want to say the right way, but if, if they choose not to have a process trailer, then they choose not to have a sound mixer on board unless they make room for the sound mixer in a proper seat with a seat belt. Right, right, right. Hey, guys, I just want to check. Can uh, a couple people give me thumbs up? Hi, Lee. I noticed that you just waved. Uh, I'm seeing somebody say that there's no audio. Can somebody confirm that there is audio? Uh, I'm looking here, and I'm hearing audio on our end saying that it is broadcasting. So just give us a thumbs up if you guys are good. Uh, we're going to continue talking because uh, I do have confirmed audio on this end. In fact, I guess we can just check it. Yeah. Okay. So I think that everybody should have audio and we should be fine. Just let us know if there's an issue. Um, we're all working here. If we go to the Mantis cam, just to give you guys an idea. Oh, and by the way, this Mantis cam is a KTEC KE24 boom pole. It's basically a small version of a pole that you can use with your hand. And I've got one of the KTEC squids, if you guys have seen it. This is an iPad mini. So if you guys have seen that, I mean, those squids, yeah. they can, I, I, sorry, I don't have anybody to focus the camera in front of me when I zoom in, but um, that, that's not going anywhere. Um, yeah, no. And it stretches pretty dang far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I, I, yeah, go ahead. No, I just, uh, the next invention would be something to shade the top of it. Because <laughs> lighting mm. would be the only issue with that outside for sure and. But I'll bet, I'll bet you could give it a hood. Absolutely. Sure. So that's basically nobody behind the cameras, guys. So just let us know. You guys uh, at home, you're going to be our crew today. So just kind of watch things if we need to talk anything. But, but yeah, getting back to uh, the working in a trunk, like just, just – is, is there any time that you should ever do this? No, never. never. There's never, never, ever an appropriate time. Uh, and honestly, in this day and age, I'm just up front and say, I'll, I'll, I'll give, you have to give me a rehearsal. I will set the levels on my machine. I will, I will place my machine in your trunk, which may be foolhardy, I suppose. Right. Many people think that is, but I do that sort of thing. Right. Um, <laughs> a couple of sandbags. <laughs> and uh, Got to protect your gear. That's such an obvious well, – that would – Saying that wasn't acceptable is in front of so many people that it usually 
flies and you don't have to you know absolutely and well hopefully them. you know at making something and on the like cheap this films, i did it I was We've all done it. I was cringing yeah. because I was, you know, the girl in the back of the MG on Mulholland fucking drive. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, it's, unrestrained. It's, it's so easy in the beginning of your career to be such a team player oh, and yeah. to be so excited about what you're doing and just the coolness and the novelty of everything. And it's easy to overlook the safety issue. Yeah, and absolutely. And also, you got to remember, you're always at the mercy of someone's learning curve. Right. Just because this director has never seen a car get hit from behind and what happens to a trunk when that happens d doesn't mean that it's, it's it makes it safe. It, it's Absolutely. just not safe. It, are we speaking? Are we, are we trying to speak to people who have had less knocks than us? Yes. For sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're speaking to the younger generation of sound mixers. What you do to hurt yourself never gets re rewarded. Oh, never. my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, they don't care. Be before yeah. it be even becomes a negotiation, what you do to hurt yourself is never, ever going to – you. You know, anyone that would reward that you don't ever want to see again. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. So yeah. it's just, uh, it's just, it's just everybody. Not worth it. It's also not worth it. You you never want to put safety into somebody else's hands on set. You know, just yeah. because there's a safety officer on set, or um, I'm going to bring it up, safety for Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You Absolutely. know, when when Absolutely. they're talking about the fact that like, oh, was there an Amtrak? representative there and, <laughs> there and there wasn't Hell no. yeah but even if there was even if there was there should have been other people going man maybe this is yeah you know yeah maybe this ain't good no no you well, know that's, that's why the assistant director was on char up on charges as well exactly yeah so you know you guys can be held accountable for these types of issues if you put a sound mixer into an, into a trunk even if they say fine because you know what they're worried that they're going to lose their job because you're pressuring them and then somebody rear ends and that sound mixer gets killed or gets hurt or whatever yeah. you are responsible so i you know what when i saw these i've had a couple of sound mixers come up and they're like yo i got chewed out by a producer saying i'm not a team player and i don't know how to handle this conversation this rebuttal back going uh, i'm sorry but tough yeah. i'm not gonna do this yeah. so hopefully this helps yeah. with that you're 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 the only person that's going to speak up for your own safety right. in a lot of situations and anybody who wants you to get in a moving car without a seat belt in a the rear end <laughs> this it, for crying out loud how many rear end collisions are there every year oh my gosh it's not a matter of yeah. of whether or not it's going to happen it's a matter of when when exactly it happens every single day every single punch them steven brunga says punch them <laughs> 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 maybe try something a little different than that but yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, the boom, god the do i want the boom to sometimes. is on the truck you yeah know, so yeah. we can't you know yeah. And, you, and and so and what you were saying, Mary Jo, is you hit record, you you do well, a test before the vehicle is in motion. You get a rehearsal. You do your rehearsal, then you hit I mean, record and you let it go. The, the yeah. recording machine, machines people are using today. Yeah. You know, you can you can you have to demand the rehearsal, and that that's probably the part that takes the most whatever force of nature your brain. I would say comes balls, from. but we're this balls? is women in film, well, yeah, so you know, sorry. It's hmm. weird, you know, because. That's not what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have proof. Anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but, yeah, we haven't come up with another. Well, you know, I mean, I, I would even just say, well, guys, what do you think is going to happen if the car gets rear-ended and I'm in there? If you What's have, up, Rado? If you have a producer that uh, – that, that can't understand, then just call it straight out. What's going to happen if the car gets rear-ended and I'm in there? Yep. <clears throat> and, and when you bring it up like that, and then okay. somebody was saying to me the other day, too, that it's okay to say, let's put this on the production report, okay? Yeah, totally. I, I oh, want this yes. in the record. Yes, I want there to be a the written meeting, approval. I yeah, I think, yeah, it was, it was the 695 anyway, meeting. It's, it's gold it's good it was richard lightstone that said it. that's who it was yeah and, and you know it sucks though because you know some people would say like oh god that sound mixer he's just being that th they're just being so difficult god we're just oh, trying man. to get the shot and it's like all the successful people are difficult uh, <laughs> there you go i mean you, you've got to stand up for yourself for you know for what you believe in for your safety because no one else is going to do it you know I, it's, it's really just not worth it. I can't stress yeah. how much we pretend for a living. It, it's not yeah. – there's there's not well, enough value in it that you should put your life what, on the line. What, what, yeah. what we do – and honestly, I do it because I would be so bored if I did something else mm – -hmm. um, is wonderfully – sorry. Ow. Mic noise. Uh, unpredictable. And, that's, and it offers plenty of natural opportunities to get hurt. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. So to do something that is predictably stupid, like getting in a trunk, mm-hmm. and I say this you know, as a graduate of having tried it that way, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you know, be open because there'll be plenty of stuff you have to, you know, be on your toes for anyway. Totally. Because of the, uh, which is, I mean, that's what I like about it. Yeah, for you sure. Know. So anyway. God, can you guys imagine like going back to that day where you're like, yeah, no problem. Uh, I'll get into that trunk. And you're like, okay. And you get in and they shut and you're like, oh God, this was a stupid <laughs> idea. God, now I got to be in here for 42 minutes <laughs> if they don't oh, screw no, up. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. I, I, don't do it, guys. I, I, I had a wedge or something. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, Crazy. No. Maybe not the so. first time. Anyway. No, it's not good ever. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay, guys, so that's for you Reddit uh, filmmakers group. Uh, I hope that this helps you guys. Just don't do it. Don't ask people to do it. And let's move on because we have some incredible women here today. And I would love to talk about your stories because uh, – well, go on, go on. I, I love you guys, I and should. I've worked with both of you extensively, and do you know, I just, I want to know more about you and share you guys to the group. You know, I can't keep you guys in myself. <laughs> well, everybody knows Mary Jo. She's delightful. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I've never heard that together before. Huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are delightful. Thank How you long have you much. been in sound? What's your story? Oh, you phrased it the right way. Let's do, do it. I've been the perennial joke uh, since 7 a.m. Um... <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I got hired to be a boom operator on a low-budget horror movie that was shooting in Rochester, or upstate New York, um, and, uh, 1979, August, so we're, we're closing in on 40, uh, and, uh, it was the only job, I had gone to film school, Mm -hmm. and uh, there I, I shot and recorded and directed, uh, eight-minute sync sound films right uh but that was the total of my experience and so i went uh and it was a nine month feature a nine excuse me nine week forgive me nine week feature um i was in alexandria bay new york when when the uh they took over the embassy in tehran wow and we'd lost all television and it was like i came back and i didn't know what had happened (laughs) <laughs> anyway, so it was a low budget movie and after that I decided well, that was too much fun. I have to do something <laughs> on the same lines. Actually, the producer of uh Game of Thrones was a production assistant on that movie. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, totally. Bernie Caulfield, it's crazy. Do you hear the guys? It's scary. This is PA, why you always be nice to the PAs. As you PA at re- Game of re- Thrones. Remember, yeah, remember There you go. Re- remember everybody. Everybody Absolutely. is cool. Absolutely. And, yeah. Don't have this uh, shoe. Don't bother me. You know, <laughs> I have a higher rank than you, soldier. Get away from yeah, me. Don't be like that. Yeah, everybody's equal on the set. I, the PAs yeah. are equal I to the director. I don't, I don't know if I go that far. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I, I believe it works. I, this is how I teach it in my class uh, at, at the art center. I say to people, I, I say, usually say that statement, and they all want to be directors, you know, so someone right. is rolling their eyes at what I say. Right. And I go, okay, let's talk about it as if it was a hospital. If you, when you have the surgeon and you have the janitor, do you think the surgeon's more important than the janitor? And he said, yes. And I said, no, and I'll prove it. If the janitor stops cleaning up all the oh, blood and all totally. the other crap here, it doesn't yeah. matter what the surgeon does. They're yeah. going to get an infection and die. Somebody's going to so die. <laughs> that janitor is pretty damn important. Yeah, he is. Right? For sure. For so sure. So it's the same on set. Everybody, everybody. is as important as everybody. <laughs> you guys have all tried to do a movie without PAs, right? We've all been there. Yeah. And it sucks. Well, and because it, you become the PA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Talk about no lockups, right? Yeah, for sure. So... Yeah. Everybody's equal. That's my opinion. Hey, guys, really quickly, John Gerdeman, he wrote in, he says, I always keep a spare bag that's ready for car rigs, and I leave it in the car like Mary Jo. But I do believe that this is one many things that producers do put on sound mixers in a position to not be a team player, which I believe uh, – may be a built-in system of having someone to blame when things go bad due to poor planning on their part. That's a pretty Mm, interesting topic. And and it is. I mean, it's absolutely valid. It is an extension of of responsibilities. Right, Mm -hmm. exactly. Which really shouldn't be happening. John, is John describing a situation where he's still recording on set? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, John, if you're listening, you know, <laughs> obviously uh, chime back in and, and we'll talk about it. Hi, oh, Ryan Graf. Well, just sure it's saying hello. To We're live on Video Mantis. 
So, oh, guys, interrupt me. I'm no, just, no, no, I'm, no. I'm just saying it's hello okay. to people as they talk. We, you know? Yeah. No, we, we, we know what overlapping can do to mm-hmm. you. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> man, if anyone man, does. Man, if this was being edited, somebody would be really mad right yeah. now. No, no. This Honey. is true. <laughs> right. We're just intelligent. Yeah. But, but but where were we? So and what was this a movie, the, a horror movie that we might have known I possibly? I doubt it. I doubt it. It was called. Uh, when we shot it, it was Mark of the Beast, and it was then it was called Fear No Evil. It was a couple of uh, brothers. I mixed the last three days mm-hmm. um, because my boss. Wait, have I named it? I did. I just named it. Mm-hmm. So I'll stop telling the story. Hmm. Was uh, do because, you like because work? people involved? I'm on television. <laughs> She's like, it's okay, everybody. We're live. It doesn't matter. You know what she oh, did? No, 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 it matters more when you're live. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You, you know what <laughs> movies? There's We're getting two, the bugs out. We're getting the bugs out. There's two movies that Mary Jo boomed that are delightful to me, and that's Mannequin and Masters of the Universe, Mannequin. which in my age group, those were freaking huge for throughout my entire childhood. I don't think I've ever seen Masters of the Universe. Masters, Masters of, of the, the universe. universe. He-Man and Dolph the Masters Lundgren. of the Universe. Oh my gosh, He-Man. I'm going to get laughed. He-Man. If Chris Silverman's listening, yeah. he's going to start dear. laughing. I used to be called uh-huh. He-Man when I worked at Coffee Sound because I had super long like boy band yeah. hair. Blonde. Uh-huh. Yes, Dolph remember? Lundgren. We used to have yeah. to wait while he would pump up <laughs> before takes. And and uh, I was like, what, why does he have to exercise right before? But he's like, it makes him bigger. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, he was unmiked, and so I had to boom it. Uh-huh. <laughs> but that's the movie I got in the union on. Oh, so that's that was sort of a good. landmark. Uh-huh. Wow. And then, yeah, I have to tell also the story of how Mary Jo technically has an Oscar. No, I don't. I have 20%. Yeah, she got 20% of an Oscar so you for got Dances like the, with Wolves. the base of the... Uh, no, no, I count from above the base. Okay, uh, uh, the shoes <laughs> or something. <laughs> no, Do they have shoes just on the shins. Head? If it okay, was shins. knee socks... The Catholic school I went yeah. to, they right? Okay, about that much. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Nice. And it's sitting in the African American Museum in Washington D.C. You can all go see it. Really? <laughs> Up to the knees, <laughs> below the knees. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's her. But the the better part of the story is is this. You talk about having guts. Mary Jo went in on that film and took over for a different mixer. I forget what his name Russell was. Williams Russell Williams. Russell Williams. That's right. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, when she got there, she did all of the stuff inside the teepees with all of the, the Lak- Lakota, Lakota, right? Lakota. And so they're speaking in Lakota language. And so the plan was to have fake gas with the shh inside the teepees. Mm-hmm. And that's how they were going to do it. Right. And they were going to ADR everything. What's now, up, Steve? Those people were Native Americans. They weren't actors. And so I, we can all imagine how the Lakota ADR was going to go. Right. Well, Mary well, Jo so, yeah. <laughs> Mary jo walked in. Do you want to tell them what you said to well, the – Well, no, no, just uh, the, the, the <coughs> director of photography was Dean Semler, uh-huh. who's just a charming one. You know, it's all in who you have are up against. Um, sure. Big Australian wonderful uh, person and really pretty good uh, – God. Anyway, uh, I said, you know, can you could you at least use real fires instead of the gas, the special effects gas jet fire? Oh yes, yeah, so you don't have the sh- and the, he the said, noise. He said, well, you know, you, well, you know, my dear, that that's that's the, my light source in in these TP interiors. They had it had gotten too cold in, in Rapid City, South Dakota, to shoot outside. So the all those uh, all those TP interiors were shot inside a uh, Rapid City. Uh, school system tra- uh, Quonset hut. Oh, really? It's like a great big like World War Two metal thing, but <laughs> it was like giant, and there'd be like five or six teepees inside. It's like so a big some of metal the yurt. Some of the yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So so he went to the special. He said, "I have to ask the special effects people if they can maintain a they, fire control, on the inside." Control. Well, no, 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 no. But well, that they'd taken care of. Mm. Uh, you're, no, but it's right. Anyway, um, if they can – he cared about his fucking light level. Yeah, you know, exactly. You know, safety, I'm sure, would have come up but mm-hmm. <laughs> at this point in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> they said they could do it, and I said, you know, it's still – he said it's still going to make noise, and I was like, yeah, but it's the right noise. Exactly. Yes. It makes yeah. sense. The noise that goes yep. with what they're talking yeah. about. Um, so anyway, she earned that So they did that. No, no, no. Oscar. Anyway, so – and he got the Oscar as well. Boom. So whenever there I used go. it for years with camera people, it usually didn't work. But 
But I tell you, you know, the guy that went along with me on this idea got an Oscar. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. tip your Oscars to each other. Yeah, yeah. Really. Welcome. It's like, doesn't that make you want to do it? Nice. That's anyway, awesome. it was nice. That was nice. It was wow. great. It was good fun. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's totally cool because you you don't know you know you re- I read the script on the. D- delivered at UPS in those days. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then, um, and I read it on the plane going from Los Angeles to, to South Dakota. To go do it. And, yeah, to go finish it for Russell, who was going to go get married. Wow. And, uh, anyway, yeah. So, but on the plane, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I can't fucking believe I'm going to work on this. Yeah, this it was is amazing. so good. That's so, so cool. Good. And just recently, Shall I just keep talking? Is yeah, yeah, yes. come on. Are people signing off? Um, no, more people are signing on. What are you uh, talking about? You're a sound no, no. celebrity, just, as I like just, to call them. Just this, <laughs> just this last fall, um, uh, a good friend of ours. Tom Curley? Yes, I know. Is, is, is he, and he's he watching, no, by the way, I believe. We're Tom Curley, oh, hey, shoot. peeps, watching on set from UT. How you doing? <laughs> I, I <laughs> didn't Tom, see that because it zoomed up. So, Tom, Tom, Tom if you're still on, let I, us know. And if I, not, people text him and get him back. Tom, can I tell you what we did last fall? Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, do it, do it. Come on. If there's something well, juicy or... Well, no, I want his permission. Oh, come on. I, I'll just say he did. <laughs> okay, because okay, I, I don't know if he's watching it's now. Okay. Well, let's see. You work with this current administration, don't you? <laughs> Sorry. I'm just going to stay no, no. out of it. Oh, no. Yeah. Nothing. I'm sorry. Everybody just forget about it. I don't know what's going on here. Well, to, to, well to, to, that's yeah. stricken from the record. Anyway, <laughs> last fall, uh, I knew that Tom was working in uh, uh, with Kevin Costner. Hi, Jim. Uh, on a series in, in Utah. Mm-hmm. And Montana. And Utah. And, uh, uh, I should get his permission. Anyway, so I, I, I uh, sent my... What's I up, sent Landon? Sent my script from Dances, which was cool because it had the Lakota on the other side because if a noise happened while while Graham Greene was talking in Lakota, I had to be able to note it. So anyway, I sent that script to Tom, and he got Kevin Costner to sign it for me. Wow. What, 29 years later? Uh, I also, here's as technical, as, as retro technical as you're going to hear for a week or more. Um, oh, boy. I, 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 we... A bunch of us recorded music in the Kicking Bird, uh, who was a rock and roller from Toronto. So he was really good on the guitar, and they everybody jammed. And I just set the um, uh, Shep's MK41, like, just set it down. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, I recorded it, and I remember doing that, and they were doing funny songs. Oh, also, Blair Forward, the VTR guy, yeah. was on the show because he was in a band with Kevin. Costner, uh, I forgot the t- I forgot the name of it. There's a nerd out there who might know. Yeah, anyway, right. God bless you. <laughs> I oh anyway, so they were kind of a good jamming session. And it was 29 minutes. Anyway, I Gosh, ran it. so you recorded I ran, that? I recorded it. Well, yeah, because I was also also a performer. Um, anyway, uh, it was a party. In, yeah. You know, at, that's anyway. awesome. It is, but the awesome the awesome part is I I had the quarter inch. I put it on my Nagra. Yeah. I ran it through. Nagra. Yeah. Nagra conversion. Nagra. Uh, and which one? Nagra was this 4. the 4.2 4 conversion. Yes. 4.2. By Neil Stone. What's up, John Gerdeman? Mm. To uh, GR1 with a serial number below 100. Anyway. Wow. Um, Everybody knows their serial numbers for Nagras. That well, blows well, my mind. Well, no, only the notable ones. I guess so. Oh, that wasn't the Nagra. That was the GR1 from, oh, the, okay. from uh, Neil Stone. Gotcha, gotcha. She knows the second time code slate ever From Denneke. I the mean, second purchased slate? from Neil Stone, mm. GR1 Denneke. Mm. Oh, my God. Sorry, Charlie. Crazy. Um, <laughs> Unreal. Uh, but anyway, but anyway, seriously, folks. So the music. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no. So I rec- anyway, I ran it on the Nagra. And the, like a dope, I tried Watch to go through a little old. box into the computer, and that was idiotic. And in addition to which, it left like, it looked like bales of hay on the heads. <laughs> And I said to myself, I don't really care about these heads anymore. So I got a scrubby from the kitchen, and I, I just c- cleaned the bejesus out of them. And I think what flaked, what was going to flake, was done flaking. And I ran it through again. And this time, of like a little more intelligently, I, s- I put it through uh, my 788 wow. and dealt with it. And then uh, took just downloaded that file, that, that CF card. Um, 
And it was great. You could hear different layers of people with the one frickin' mic lying on the floor. Amazing. Uh, That's or great. It may have moved around once or twice. Yeah, no, and the prop guy did bongos, and it was... Uh, that's it so was cool. very funny. Anyway, but the fact that you the machine worked. You should put that worked, on Facebook. Yeah. Well, the fact that the machine, it's too long a story. Hmm. Uh, the fact that the machine worked, and, and it sounded so damn good. <laughs> it sounded yeah. so analog. Yeah. <gasps> anyway. For it was, sure. you know, it's just two analog tracks. For sure. I'm, I'm telling you. Right. Well, anyway. I, well, I, with respect, I, I wasn't around in the Nagra days. No. I, I basically graduated and then got into sound right at the transition of digital, right when the 744Ts were right hitting the market and stuff. Yeah. So, like, I, I still had to know how to do all that stuff. But luckily, when I got on my shows, yeah. thank God, I had to go, here's a compact flash. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> thank all. God, because I respect the i don't know how you guys could have done it you couldn't do what you guys did back then with the temperaments of people today that's a well, fact i guess temper mm. I, I maybe maybe technology dictates the temperaments well, of the people yes come up and stay is that what yeah. Real assholes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. um well yeah keep talking no Sorry. no i i i i i one thing by the way is it occurs to me though i both both bought of the Bought both of those items, the Nagra and uh, uh, that mic, from a, another woman, from a woman who uh, went to sound mixing in the early. Coming back live. Sorry, guys. The camera shuts okay. off every 30 minutes. We're back. Oh. Mm -hmm. well, sorry oh, if there's a little. Yeah, sorry. Just the no, uh, no, the no. auto of the camera. It so. takes me back to PD6 partitions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, anyway, I'm I was just going to say, I bought both of those, uh, the, the Nagra and, and that mic from Anna Delonzo, mm. who was for decades uh, uh, a great boom operator and, uh, and uh, utility, mm -hmm. but who, like so many in the early 80s, uh, s just stopped mixing. Mm -hmm. She was the mixer on the second film I ever worked on. Mm. Mm. Um, matter of fact, I just got a call from... Uh, a producer asking about the Pink Motel, and I remember hitting the ceiling constantly, booming for Anna on <laughs> on that movie. <laughs> anyway, yeah. but really quickly, just you know, uh, Jim Keeney is saying, uh, guys, just for anybody that's uh, joined in recently, I'm here with Mary Jo Devaney and Carrie Sheldon. We're just talking about women in film and and their experiences, and you know, just just a little bit about everything, telling some fun stories and going deep. What? <laughs> well. Yeah. Okay. You, I, I actually have a question for you guys mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, one of the things is since you are one of the pioneers for women in film, even if you may not you – know, I mean, you are. No, no, no it's accidental. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> accidental, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I can't imagine some of the challenges that may have arose – uh, in just in your career, and I'd like to talk basically about your experience of your career, you know, from, you know, then to now, and honestly, how it basically helped to pave way for people like Carrie, too, you know, I mean, let's face it, this is, I have shirts that say sound guy, and now I feel bad, I gotta just cover up this, well, just cover up the guy, guy part unisex. to say sound. Uh, no, no, no. Well, guy is no. unisex. Yeah, no, yeah, guy is unisex. Good, you okay, know what? everybody. You've, you've, your time shared it for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my right. old girls school we were hey guys let's do this yeah there you so, go see it just think it different okay well good, good. okay i don't have to rip those proudly. shirts up or wear anything like that proudly i think i'm hearing a couple crackles every once in a while just oh, making yeah. sure we're good um let me know if we have any distortion right. everyone um but yeah so so talk to me what what do you think huh. oh. or, or what do you think guys uh, let, let it go i don't know you know every show is different sometimes you get crap from the guys for <laughs> any number of things. Mm -hmm. The longer that I do this, the more that I am frank. If somebody says something I don't like, then I tell them. And if I haven't, I don't know, it's been a long time. One time I stabbed a guy with a fork. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, but, it, it, you know, it took, a, he, it took a long time for me to stab him with a fork. He didn't get the message for was a long time. Was he trying to spoon you? No, he was trying to pinch my nipple. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, damn! Nice I hear she took that joke to a different level, didn't <laughs> we she? We need a snare drum. Jesus, Adam Ching. Hey, Stephen Almendinger, how you doing, buddy? Oh, and Whoop. I have. There's the this one uh, 728. <laughs> Carrie, dude. tell the fork stabbing story, Landon. <laughs> yeah, says. Listen, yeah, it's I funny. Think, well, <laughs> yeah. We were at we were at lunch, and he kept. He thought he was being cute, and he had tried it several times to grab my nipple, and I just took my fork when he reached out and I stabbed him, and then he said that I was a bitch. 
Ouch. Well, we are Facebook Live, so we're going to try to <laughs> tame that down a little bit. But you know what? what you know, she's had two I'm F-bombs. sorry. I should have. I'll I'll well. What now? Yeah, what just happened? Not did did that ship pass me? That one, yes. Yeah. But leave it behind you. Yeah. Um, You'll tell me when I'm older, right? But now, I mean, nowadays in the environment that we're in, I would say that uh, I've made a couple of changes to when I mic people. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I do a lot more, hey, I'm going to put my hands in your pants. And or can I put my hands in your pants, you know, so that uh, we I do, you know, I ju just say it out loud, man. Consent is everything. Absolutely. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's so just be professional. Yeah. This morning I had two women in my mouth. Yeah. And, and you know, <laughs> it's just <laughs> approach it. <laughs> you just <laughs> getting uncomfortable. Um, Mm. Well, no, but I mean, mm. it's, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, oh, my it's goodness, like it's a doctor. Too. You're like a doctor, you know? It's, yeah, well, that's it's exactly just, it. Yeah. It's, it, I wouldn't like, I would just say, you know, oh, hi. <laughs> I usually say, oh, Mary Jo, and it's nice to meet you. And, and, you know, now in this length of friendship, I'm going to put my hands in your shirt. And most people are yeah. absolutely cool yeah, with exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know. and, and fine. I love people that pay no attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I mean, that was. Yeah. yeah, people that just show up and you just do they it read and then they while walk you're away. doing it. It's like, thank you, mannequin. <laughs> My favorite is that. then they're like, okay, are you ready to do this? You're like, oh, it's already on. Oh, that's okay. the, that's the best. Yeah. Oh yeah, or they're like, hey, are you gonna do it? I did it like five minutes ago. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Now you're loitering. But. Yeah, exactly. You're loitering. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. No, but there are people who are sensitive. Yeah. Exactly. There are definitely people who are sensitive. Well, what That's are okay. okay? Here's some things. Let, let's say because obviously we have the whole hashtag Me Too thing going on right now and that's uh, it's a very good movement. I think that uh, the whole Bill Cosby thing and the Weinstein uh, thing. He was so cute. Anyway, I'm there's sorry. there's <laughs> just a lot going on sure, and a, a lot of too. a lot of boulders that are being picked up and Well, people I think are scattering. What's your opinion on all this? It's I, well, I hope what I hope is that men recognize how many men actually do that kind of shit. And because it's it's when they say not all men, it's close. <laughs> well, so well, that's I, it's tough. You it, weren't uh, expecting one point of view from the two of us, were you? No, it's all good. I yeah, mean, I know. honestly, Mary Jo has a different way. Well, of, Mary I, Jo has had a, a different experience. It's just true. Guys, it's let us know true. your experience on this topic, too. Obviously, we're talking about, you know, just women in film and, you know, the hashtag Me Too movement. I, I mean, personally, one thing that I'm a little bit concerned about, and I, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm just a little scared boy, but mm -hmm. you know what? Like, just talking to people on oh, yeah, set absolutely. you know yeah, like yeah. i don't want to offend anybody but yeah. like you know i think that everybody with their iphones nowadays and the whole social media movement a lot of people are very empowered it's a lot about me and stuff like that and i'm not saying that this is part of the <laughs> that, me too movement be, it may be an exacerbation of what's been around for okay well, sure. we, you got to understand, we're seeing things. Things are being recorded more now than they ever have been. Sure. And then through social media and through the Internet, more information is being spread from all around the world. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, frankly, it's about time that women get treated equal to men. Absolutely. We're, absolutely. we're not even close to that. Th this sure. is This is that we're at the very, very beginning of this problem. Yeah. It's like we used to think that everything was okay right here. And the women, whether they liked it or not, that's how it was because men run the world for the most part. And now we've said, no, now this is where it's okay. So everybody's kind of running and trying to figure out where do they land yeah. on which side of the spot. Are they over yeah. here? Are they over here? Are they over here? So we have a whole lot of learning to do. We do. And so open dialogue and listening. Taking a step back listening and listening. to what women say. Yeah. A lot of people don't really listen to women. Mary Jo was, was told a story one time of walking up and standing at a counter waiting for something. And there was oh. like two or three other people there. And the guy helped the two or three other people and then totally ignored her and walked away. But yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that Jason wasn't Brooks the first Sagan, time that that's happened, you know? It, there's all kinds of little things that happen, all kinds of, of tiny little, you know, and it, it's interesting for sure. It, 
but I think really just speaking up and asking for consent. It, it really is not hard to say, do you mind yeah. if I put my hand in your pants? Yeah, that, yeah. That's really not a hard thing to exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah, you're just describing the process of what you have yeah. to do. You know, and, and just being able to read a person, too. Yes, you know? this, for I, sure. I talk about this in my class at the Art Center. If you can't read the, the people and the situation that's happening, there's a bigger picture. Sure. This is about where you are yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, you, you know, you have to understand. You're part of this process. Yes, this huge process. This process. And this person is a different part, and this person is a different yep. part, and this and person is a different together. part. Yeah, and so y you have to know kind of it, – it really is just doing – reading the situation, understanding – the people that you're dealing with, you know, if you have an actor that is about to do something really, really deep, really difficult, really emotional, and they're struggling, then you want to do everything you can to help them. You're not going to walk up and be like, oh, hey, hi, let me put a mic on you. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, you're going to walk up and be as unobtrusive as you can. You're going to put the mic on them and then walk away. I just did a movie yeah. with Mary Jo Davini here. I was lucky enough to boom for her. It was a small movie that had a, a lead actress that was very well known, mm. and there it was a, a very difficult part. Alfre Woodard. Thank it was you. yes, it was a very right. difficult part, and you know, it, I think that Alfre is probably used to a certain caliber of filmmaking, and this was maybe a little bit, oh, uh, you know. Yeah, she's 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 you know, we all understand the two poles the, the the very technical actor and the very emotive actor and mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. all the way in she's a, an 11 on the emotive scale yes. and getting method, and getting, method. Yeah, yeah. so what for, emoticon for would she be do we have totally and completely as small as I could be a and she appreciated the hell out of that in the end because yeah. she knew uh, you had to be there you did. are part yeah. of the process yeah no she's yeah. a professional yeah mm. it just and it, it was it was it's so, it's sometimes it's worth it yes i've I had think, actors i hate doing all that for someone that's really not very good i, I it, should get over it, that in the end it was Al alfrey ended up giving me um some validation in the end that was so wonderful because sh i was walking to the bar and she reached out this and grabbed me at the rap party <laughs> uh -huh. and pulled me into her conversation and introduced me to her husband and then I continued talking there was another actor there with her and it, she pulled me and that means she thought about me as an equal colleague hmm. and as a professional mm -hmm. and so in that moment I was like oh my gosh this is success <laughs> right here this, hey, is, this is success yeah so it's I don't know how we got into that topic, but well, <laughs> has nothing to do with me too. Women and being, sens uh, being sensitive, I guess, the topic of yeah. Oh, I, empathy. I, that's what it was. We yeah. and empathy. Yeah. But but I also think it's been a topic since we've kind of bringing up the Me Too generate uh, movement. Yeah. Mm. Whatever. I I found it a giant revelation the extent to which this happened. Mm. I haven't experienced the. The sensational part, which first gets um, the coverage, you know, the, the physical accosting. But you have to figure if your opinion of women is that is your their purpose. But this one is not usable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you're probably <laughs> less likely for the purpose I wanted. <laughs> um, you're probably less likely <laughs> to be kept around dating. and promoted. <laughs> well, right. I'm also expa explaining, you know, <laughs> if there is, if there is, what pisses me the, excuse me, beep, what bothers the heck out of me. Heck. Is, you know what really grinds my gears <sighs> is is the is the the professional discrimination. Yeah, yeah, frankly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. Frankly. Yeah. And, uh, well, what's the difference? Like, so just people understand. I mean, like, let's face it. Like, say somebody's been on set the first time and they don't. Wow, <laughs> it'd be like, dude, somebody's like totally like taking offense, uh, you know, to there you. Or whatever. Was, yeah, no, like, a, yeah. There was a wonderful article that was written by a woman who was a man and then transitioned and was a camera operator and, and had their own camera kit, who, you know, fairly large, and would go and shoot photographs and uh, professionally. And when he was a he, he was treated completely different than he was when he yeah. be she became a she. 
And she yeah. said it was the difference between people walking up and going, hey, welcome, uh, to uh, good to see you, and then well, walking away. And then instead, when she was a woman, they'd come up and go, oh, hey, so how long you been doing this? <laughs> and, you know, trying to figure out, does she know what she's doing? Is this, uh, is this your <coughs> gear? You, yeah. I, Interesting. I, well, I guess we've established I'm on the, on the eve of, well, not quite. 18, 19. So uh, actually, not quite. Only over thirty-five years. Um, but I still don't walk on a set without trying to you know, do something intelligent with a C-stand knuckle or something. Just because, well, and especially now looking older, it's like you know, Katie bar the door. But you have. <laughs> could I have used an older expression? I don't think so. <laughs> um, yeah. I've never even heard of that. <laughs> I know. It's okay. You say a lot of shit. I don't know. I've never heard of it. Oh, well, there's that. Um, but anyway, but you you always have to prove yourself. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And we all uh, know It's that. not, honestly, the disrespect. I can handle the disrespect. It's not being able to accomplish something in the furtherance of getting good sound. Right. That's what bothers me. Yeah. That's, yes. That's yes. Exactly. your arguing. I'm here your bar to that's your bargain. You. Mm -hmm. That's your bargaining power. I'm here just that's, to record your I mean, track. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, you're talking about what hurts yeah. is professionally is professionally is is not getting you know that's not going to work and they usually don't say dear or honey anymore yeah. <laughs> but uh oh yeah challenging anyway. your ideas but you mean it <laughs> you can't challenge them if they if they listen to them without right. interrupting which yeah. is already a giant success i had i was but on it's a gotten thing better it has gotten not better. fast enough I, no. I was on a thing uh well, people aren't going to put up with bullshit anymore and i think that that's good oh. well i was on i was on a union yeah. i was on a union tv show and uh with michael heaney and i walked in sheraton told me what to do. sheraton was the boom and sheraton said hey carrie bring a, a fernie pad blah, blah 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 he was all ready he had it on standby way early so then he's like, okay, fly it in, because the, the actress had to drop a bunch of stuff on mm -hmm. the ground. Yeah, so get and it in there. So get it in there, right? And so I go in to put it in, and the dolly grip and the second AC both tried to tell me no. They both spoke up and said, no, 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 no. And so then I, it, I pulled it out, and then we What's did up, another Ryan? take, and then the director, who's a man, said, can't we put down a fernie pad for that stuff to hit? Yeah. And I was blown away, because I was like, I just yeah. was... what. Yeah. What the? Yeah, <laughs> it's you know it's you find, rough. Yeah, take it to the court of assistant direction. Uh, yeah, you too got, many you cooks got, in the kitchen. Got, no, but you got to get a heads up from the AD, and then you know uh, he'll be your lawyer uh, when everybody true. else objects. Right. Yeah. While you're getting it done. Preemptive. You know, hey, I just to let you know well, I'm gonna help yeah. with that. Have I this mean, standing by, so when it becomes a problem, yeah. and it will. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. We're old, ready to old, go. Old set person rule of thumb is is. Let the AD know what you're doing. I spent years surprising them and getting them in trouble. So getting myself in trouble. Right. Yeah, they so, don't like surprises. Yeah, no, no. no so, they don't. But I mean, they? It, they really are. There is a sense of insurance if they haven't said no and you, you know, you don't have to discuss it. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. wow. Nine times out of ten, you can get away yep. with that little mm -hmm. discussion. Huh. But it is more difficult. I mean, it. But and I deny. I denied these thoughts for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And then everybody started saying things that my subconscious had been saying. I was like, mm -hmm. I mean, well, you didn't darn it again. It. Bring that fader down. It again. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> or sneeze during the mix. Um. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's definitely, I think things are changing. Things are getting better. And I don't know. I haven't had any trouble from uh, in the last year when I've been working. I haven't had... I mean, I had that one incident. I did go to the second AD who was younger than me mm -hmm. and, and had less years on set. And I said, what is it that made you say no to me? Why, why did you say no to me? Was it because I'm a woman? Because oh. I wanted him to think about it. Yeah. And he couldn't. You got to put him on he, the spot sometimes. Yeah. It, it he, is absolutely unconscious. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Actually, I was, mix, I was mixing an episode of Teen Wolf, the TV show. And that was in the, it was in the plot line. This is several years back. So it's been a while. But it was one of those aha moments. I was like, that's that's what I've observed and thought about for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's absolutely unconscious. Huh. And and it's unconscious. Yeah, a lot of them and are I not know aware it's unconscious doing it. because I'm unconsciously biased. I was oh, on yeah. a I was on a commercial yeah, and yeah. the director was a lovely young woman who was down in a corner to be listen interacting with her actress. And but she was looking away and she said something and I I was like, I did not tune into that like I would 
ordinarily for a director because mm-hmm. her voice was just, you know, a lot of a lot of it is voice. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, and that's an, uh, that's certainly our unkind, especially as sound people. Well, not as sound people. Sound people are really cool. Um, I know. I'm Damn always surprised straight. by how much I well, like it's, everybody. It's yeah. true. It's true. I didn't really like the sound, but the people were so good. I kept doing it. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, but 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 voices and and it's all unconscious. Yeah, yeah. And the only thing is, start thinking about what's been unconscious. I guess is mm-hmm. my, you know, someone like you. You're us, Fab. I think, uh, which is uh, we're going to start. We're going to think of an award of some kind, but we haven't designed it. Unusually smart for a boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and and. I don't understand. That's okay. But I'm honored. That's all right. No, no, that's not kidding. Right. No, but you're asking. You have a daughter. You're, tri- you're asking, and you're trying to understand. That's that's always a booster. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was um, taught to respect everyone that respects me, mm-hmm. and to start yeah. respecting first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just to, to give the utmost yep. respect until it's not given to you. Mm-hmm. So I respect and I love everyone. People have different ter- interpretations of respect. Yeah, there that is, is that true. That is true. Well, what and does I respect mean to you guys? That's a hard. That's a loaded question. I'm sorry, but it's absolutely true, and I hear it a lot. These conversations. Are we getting too, prof- too? Uh, well, no, I don't think so. I think that anything. I suppose. Uh, well, let's say you know what. Think? Uh, like, well, we we got a bunch of people saying uh, Mary F and Joe, condition. Missy, a John Hicks, oh, Johnny, <laughs> and Daniel oh. Powell. Tough to distinguish between standard disrespect towards sound department and disrespect towards sound exactly. department plus misogyny. Exactly. Yeah. Let's no, talk no, about no, that. Yeah. No, it's Dan true. Powell, thank you. It's I just yeah, heard a beep. You heard a beep? Did oh, anybody hear? Did is everybody go good? Just give me a thumbs up, somebody, if we're good. And we're going to make sure. In fact, no. I'll flip to the Mantis cam because okay. we might flip off this. for I a minute. That's everybody. <laughs> got to remember this. We're just flipping to another camera right now. And then <laughs> <laughs> there's our Mantis cam, everybody. <laughs> we're working here, guys. You know, the more oh. people that support Video Mantis uh, and, you know, think about maybe even getting VM Pro subscriptions on the app, the faster I'll be able to build this even better. I just want to continue to get oh, all of this education out. To everybody. All right, we're back. <laughs> I, m- I made sure that the cameras was turned off and turned on. Now it I won't understand. flip off. So I understand. So John Hicks, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, huh? Is hmm. he is he in Atlanta? Is that uh, right, John know. Hicks? Because he's he's working at True Audio out there. I think, right? I don't know. I think so. Oh, totally. Are you kidding? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. I know you, John. Yes, he is. Okay. Good. I mean, at least yes. Cool. We Thanks for watching, uh, Atlanta. Uh, there was an announcement on Facebook. That today <laughs> <laughs> um no he's he's lovely no what was i oh shoot well no i all have often thanks brian I, I i realized last year that after years of going well am i being persecuted because i'm a sound person or a woman <laughs> or is it me you know? or all of the above <laughs> and, you know, and it's a terrible thing you spend i spend so much time beating myself up going it's probably me yeah. anyway but but i realized just last fall i think or maybe a year ago that that sound people are the women of the onset departments. Mm-hmm. You can yeah. be brushed aside. You, so, I mean, your question is, I think, very apropos. You can be brushed aside. You may not get all the information. I just, if guys want to empathize, mm-hmm. you know, we, we chose the double whammy. Yeah. You guys <laughs> are just treated this way. And I, you know, I'm only talking about narrative film sets. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. sure things are great uh, in reality TV. Hmm. Uh, hmm. <laughs> 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 but I don't know, <laughs> and that's not an accident. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, but but that's all I'm going to say. You know what I hated I is, is that, you know, like – I don't like to say that I have a pretty boy face, but I have a pretty boy face. Oh, you're little, adorable. Little, I'm a boy band. Mm-hmm. Bye, bye, bye. Um, but it was really hard, the ageism growing mm-hmm. up. Like, everybody mm-hmm. was like, just sh- shut the fuck up, boy, understand. and do what I tell you my to do. Pardon my, my, daughter's, my, French. my daughter's almost 33, and she's a baby face. And yeah. I've, we've had this conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I understand. And it's rough because it's understand. like, you know what? Nowadays, you know, you look at kids that are like, f- th- I'm a huge Apple fan. You guys can look. There's a lot of uh-huh. apples in this room. Um, but I follow like a lot of developer stuff. And there's a kid that's like five, six years old that has like 25 apps in the app store. He's wow. like a freaking coding genius. It's like, mm-hmm. totally. you don't know who you're talking to anymore. You, you know yeah. what I mean? You need to just give you respect, never, you, you know? And it's true, and that's what I said. You never know 
I mean, there was the PA on my first movie. Yeah, he unreal. He walks across the stage and, and, and collects the Emmys year after year for Game, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Thrones. It's Game of Thrones. unreal. It really you know. Is. Anyway, but so, yeah. Congratulations for them, too, Tree, because they no, hustled. But they got it. Oh, yeah, totally. that guy did it. Totally. Right? You know? totally. But you're right, and that's – well, that's what I love about this business. Mm-hmm. I mean – it's actually sometimes it's very difficult for me to hang out with people my old my own age my old age mm-hmm. my own old age uh, who aren't in this business. Yeah. Oh man. They're, <laughs> They're slow. No no no. Right like you know in terms no, of like when no no when I'm with like let's hear your whoa preju- <laughs> let's hear your prejudice. Careful no I don't mean it like that I mean like when I go home to Michigan when I go home to Michigan <laughs> just like I notice like everything this. is like slow paced and just yeah. uh, you know what I mean so yes. that's what I mean like when you're not with like friends that are in production you're like yo can you just get to the that's point true. like we, we gotta roll that's true that's <laughs> true uh, 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 but actually I'm talking about the mindset oh okay go ahead go ahead sorry but actually we took a break anyway different people yeah these are people in LA fair enough these are film people yeah these are people like me who have been doing it and involved uh, and keep doing it and staying involved. Yeah, anyway, they're much harder. That's they're much sure. harder to be with, mm-hmm. frankly, for me. Right. So it's all it's all what you hang around with. Yeah. It's peer pressure. Mm. <laughs> it's good peer pressure. It's crazy. Anyway, and it's it, the it, heat to of the, the moment it is. too. I'm also critical. There's still. there's so many variables in everything too because you know what? Sometimes you might talk to somebody and they're super nice, and then you know what? The next day they're really under the gun because they're setting up that process trailer rig or whatever. Yeah. And you know what? their dick <laughs> that day mm-hmm. you know what i mean like it just well, ha- or they true. slept Person's bad true. or something it's human yeah you gotta be this empathetic empath- empath- empathy there yeah and and be nice everybody understanding that uh sometimes not the right time to say things <laughs> yeah time <laughs> and place for well, everything well, and empathy yeah. empathy is what informs that, right it's really that true. Desi- yep. that realization Yep. Um, uh, R- Rado says, let's talk about 12 on and 12 off. And everybody, uh, if, oh, if you're yeah. just joining in, I'm talking to Mary Jo Devaney and Carrie Sheldon on the Video Mantis podcast. We're just talking about women in film. And uh, in a little bit, we're actually going to branch into film. a couple uh, questions that I have from some listeners as well. Yeah. Uh, but Rado is talking about 12 on and 12 off. And hey, Ray, how you doing, bud? Um, what can you guys say about that? 12 on 12 off how important it is i i I was working on fox shows when they introduced the 14-hour mandate where the president of fox came down and said you're done you are done shooting 18 20-hour days because people were getting hurt and you know we're shooting down in long beach like three times a week and it it was it was rough you know so they were just like 14 hours you're done and if we were on location and it's 14 hours they would be like everyone we're wrapped, put everything in the truck and go home. If you're too tired to go home, you get a hotel room and then you mm-hmm. give me the receipt the very next day and I will give you a check. Boom. Mm-hmm. Like that. There's no playing around anymore because yeah. it's so much time. Let's take it. If we're working 14 hours, yeah. that means we got to drive to work. We got to drive home. What? Yeah. How long also, does it take you to drive the home? Lunch, the and the lunch. Yeah. I hated yeah. taking one hour lunch breaks okay. on film sets. Oh god, that's the worst. Because then you're just forced to yeah. be there longer. longer. And it's for makeup yeah. and hair. You know? And yeah. A D schedule. Uh, yeah. Oh, is it, yeah. can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I honestly oh. you just kind of enlightened me a little bit more to a more of a perspective that I maybe not understand. When little knives have been jabbed in you repeatedly, you begin to recognize a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Or you just bleed yeah. out a lot, but uh, one of the two. It's no, it's a death of a thousand cuts, literally. Anyway, uh, we spit take. Uh, no, no, it's just if there's an hour lunch, nine times out of ten, it's giving the actor the SAG actor, and boy, if there's an AD, there's probably somebody who knows the AD rules. But anyway, uh, if there is uh, an actress that, act- actress, oh, that was that was a little unconscious bias right there. Oh boy. There, if there is an actor, performer, person that needs uh, a half an hour, but then needs to go back through makeup because you always hear ass- assistant directors managing that. Anyway, if there's an hour lunch for the crew, it's probably to accommodate the uh, SAG actors required lunch and the turnaround on getting them ready so you can all be under the whip immediately after lunch. Boom. That's all. Yeah. But, yeah, that's actually, it's obviously just um, uh, hearsay. Right, right, right. Yeah, it makes sense. I, mean. I just look at motives. I guess it's a part of the empathy. <laughs> <laughs> it motives is. can be good. Motives, mm-hmm. are, that's what, you know. 
with people in this business, it's good. Yes. Well, one thing that I do when if we're dealing with lunches and stuff like that, and I'm on like a you know working on a lot, if we have an hour lo- breakaway and I've got a scene with five people. I'm going to get all it. the actors, transmitters back. You know, depending on who they are, I might let them leave mm-hmm. the wires no, on. True. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, I'm rebattering them and everything because, man, I've had so many times where you get there and it's like, all right, we're back. And you look around and you're like, that's going to be one not of those really, days. Yeah. No one. Oh. Yeah, not really. <laughs> no, we're not really back. There's no one here yet. I'm like the only person here is the sound utility and the AD that said it, you know, and, yeah. and it just takes 15 to 20 minutes for everybody to stagger in. But then there's those days where you're working five or six people, and it's like, and we're back. Hey, there's the six people that need to be wired, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just yeah. like, oh my god. Yeah, no, and I if understand. you're not ready mm-hmm. right then and there, you're gonna have a problem. I help. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. I'm lucky. Or, or, the mixers that I've worked with, all of they it. help uh, all the time. But yeah, I, no, but I, I, it's w- wrong. I do want to say this <laughs> to Rado. If you're doing something that's non-union, then as the sound mixer, you have a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of power. It's not very much. But you can absolutely refuse to go past X amount of hours or, yeah. to, or to not have a turnaround. And, you know, there's very few times when I would exercise power. The few times I've done it in my career were safety issues. But yeah. you, uh, and one time I, wa- I left after 12 and a half hours and the, the director was like, what's happening? And I said, well, it, it's 12 and a half hours. And he goes, but we're not done. And I said, but you're not paying me anymore. And he goes, oh. And then I finished wrapping up, and I left. And when I came back, I thought for sure I'd be fired. I didn't care. That was part of it. Mm-hmm. But Fine. when it's I came back on Monday, uh, the crew members were like, thank you so much. Uh, it's, the t- it's the tiniest little bit of power. But it, and it o- works on, like, indie films, you know. Which goes to show it isn't false. No. It's chutzpah. It's something. Amen. I I'm just And it's taking chances. It's probably risky behavior. Yeah. Right. Right, no. right, right. But uh, I... I lived in Venice for many years n- when Roger Corman had a studio in Venice for many years and when towards the end when they would be uh, realizing that they needed like a third or fourth sound person because yeah. they were doing stuff all over this miserable little uh, former lumber yard hammer, ham and lumber they would call me and I came over and one night was the night that they, towards the end of Black Scorpion when they were we were shooting in the alleys of Venice and pushing a car that had been too beat up to drive anymore. <laughs> right. With a long lens, so you wouldn't see the crew members on either side. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> kind of what car, I'm doing right now to get past off, yeah. threading exactly. the needle between it's my sort of gear. Like this frame. <laughs> uh, it's running funny. down the aperture. Anyway, but it's funny and it was great. And uh, uh, one of those grips was died on the road that night mm. because it was a 14, 15 hour day. I don't mm-hmm. like hearing so that. So this is your. Guidance for the non-union, and I'll guarantee it, it you know, didn't do him in his career any good. <laughs> Daniel Powell says, yeah. I've pulled the my batteries are all dead trick. I've actually done oh that yeah. before. I said, you know what? I'm sorry. When we uh, talked about this and we negotiated this job, you told me it was a 12-hour job. I brought the 12-hour batteries. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've literally done that before. Mm-hmm. I've been like, I'm sorry. You know yeah. what? Like, yeah. I have a job yeah. tomorrow at 6 a.m., and you're taking me you into know, 5 a.m. Being able to deliver bad news well is a big part of How do you do gig. it? Okay, you know it what? It depends on the situation. Can we role play mm-hmm. for a second? Okay. Okay, so um, why don't you Uh-oh. be the sound mixer oh. and help us, and we are now yeah. reaching the 14.5 hours. Mixer. You want to be the... Yeah, I can be a sound mixer. Yep. I'm not good at being a meanie. I just tell it my way, and she'd correct me. So listen. Okay, <laughs> but can you be the mean producer? Because I suck at being mean. Oh, She'll, yeah, She's no. going to steamroll oh, no. me. No, you oh. be mean. <laughs> your sound mixer, your producer. To, okay, so mixer. basically, I'll be the mixer. We're at fourteen and a half hours, and I notice now that the dolly grip is falling asleep at the do- ah pull up, pulling. You know what I mean? So whoa, whoa, it, whoa, it's whoa, time whoa, whoa, whoa. to How go. How much home. money am I making? <laughs> <laughs> There's the real answer, isn't it? Well, no, I just want to know. I need, uh, let's I say need a little context. This is a is this a union shoot or is this no, a no, let's well, say that this is a non-union I shoot. Haven't, I haven't seen I, the experience that I have had it within the union. I haven't very often, especially recently, been on shows that worked more than like We're 14 hours. <laughs> and almost everybody has tried to get us out at 12. Right. With, with the things that I've done. Now, a couple of years ago, I did, uh, I mixed a, a so thing cute. called Aim oh, High no, Season 2. 
and uh, we were doing 18 hour, 17 hour days. It was really crazy. And uh, the day that I, w we did like, we worked really late into the night and I came home and slept and I had my paycheck. So I was going to drive to the bank and yeah. I pulled on to Magnolia and T-boned a dude. Oh no. And it was oh, actually an gosh. amazingly and like, wonderful And there goes that check. No, it, it, this went so well. I was so lucky. He, it didn't do any damage. It, it, I just was moving not very fast, and it, I, I just hit him, and it, it did very little damage. His car was but very, very old. That you did he that got out of the car, and wrong. he was a waiter who was on his way to work, and he was running late. And so I ah. ended up offering him a hundred bucks on the spot, and he took it and left. Boom. There you go. Yeah. Well, you made his night. He's like, oh, I can do with that yeah. scratch. But yeah. the fact that you were incapacitated that much yeah. is why you put it Yeah. Up. And yeah. so that was, yeah, it Crazy. was, I totally, th it was not reasonable or safe for me to be driving. Now, uh, I, again, this is the same deal where I, you just got to speak up. Absolutely. And, and it, it would help if you could get department heads together so that you guys can all approach yeah. the producer yeah. and say, look, no, there's, the this is not safe. Yeah. Now, yeah. if it is a union thing, then you just got to notify uh, the union. Uh, right, yeah. right, right, right. You know, no, th this is that's a Joe Arita's call. In minutes, I actually have a couple listener questions, and one of Excellent. them is from uh, Jana, uh, Jana R. Lopez Raven, and uh, she's Hi, a, a little long-winded. Uh, sorry, Jana, um, but I'm going to try to get the question out as best as I can here. So she says, hey, Thomas, how are you? I have a question. I have a wardrobe gal who I go ahead and I put the mic on in front of wardrobe on the actress. So I guess, you know, the wardrobe person is present. Standing okay. by. Standing by. And all of a sudden, when I'm not there, she goes back and she places the mic someplace completely different where it sounds scratchy. Not good. Reggie says, it's like we got some gremlins around here. <laughs> that's, that's Reggie for you. Um, because he hears the change after it was just there. Okay, so they're putting the mic on. They're doing the test at the board going, hey, can you talk? Hello, hello, hello. Everything sounds good. Okay, cool. They're bringing the fader down and letting the actress go to set. And then when they listen during take one, yeah. they're like, it doesn't sound that good anymore, right? Mm -hmm. um, so she says, I saw the result today of her moved the mic on a chunky sweater when I took it off. I'm using the low-profile rig we used in Destroyer. Two circles sandwiched the Sennheiser tiny mic. I placed it on the chunky sweater because it's obviously not going to sh they send them to set. They're done, yeah. right? But usually so at that you point, just make they're done. With the on the side oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and then you can, you know, if, if you have a conversation, you, you wire them while they watch. By the time they watch you do it four or five times, they're not going to be interested in watching you anymore. Yeah, as long as because they know that boring. you have, well, no, that they'll, they'll, you know what you're doing. They'll know how to do it. Well, that too. Yeah. I mean, if you that, have that the is six one people thing. showing up. That's I have another. Had place i would you know you said suddenly you get back and you have to have six people sure. which happens all the time oh, all the time people we know mm -hmm. uh elicit help absolutely uh, a sound team and if wardrobe if people that you are you know friendly with sure as yeah. as a as a sound team if you've got five or six people to wire you need to make sure everybody including wardrobe knows because you know what they don't want to totally. wait on us yeah so you know what sometimes if 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 the if the process of the f if the filmmaking process is not running smoothly where the bottleneck ends up dumping onto sound where then they can say hey now we're waiting on sound because you've got six people to wire yeah. well then that's a situation and the problem is that not very many people know what happens when you have six people to wire if exactly. more people understood yeah. that they wouldn't yeah. send True. six people exactly. to wire exactly and you know what it would be different if we were doing a scene where everybody was wearing like cotton up jogging pants and a t-shirt yeah. mm -hmm. they it would be really yeah we could wire everybody in 30 seconds go boop 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 boop, boop get right. them on set yeah. right, that's but when the they're thing. wearing True. leather pants well, and dangly chains and yeah. having the as Fabio a, chest a, out mixer, what up as, the, <laughs> as a mixer on the conventional films, I guess this doesn't happen that much anymore. Go to the production meeting and, and make friends with the costume designer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. make friends for with the costume designer I mean, every I time. Absolutely. Stuff, costume designers are artists, and they can be difficult to deal with. And so I try from the very beginning to be, be friendly. Be uh, in fact, a friends. show that I did with Mike Ohini at the beginning of this year, we had an artist costume designer, and she was a little bit difficult for a lot of people, but she was not in any way, shape, or form difficult for me because of the way that I approached her and yeah. the way that I treated yeah. her. 
it, we had a very good relationship. She trusted me completely. Right. It was, and you know, I, I straight out said to her, I'm going to do this. And then if you'd like to make a suggestion, I'm open to it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and right. she, that, that's all I had as soon as it was a collaboration and I respected yeah. her as an artist. She was fine. I like actors who know exactly how to mic themselves mm. or how, how they should be mic'd. Mm -hmm. It's, it's wonderful because nobody's going to give you a hard time at what you did or anything. Uh oh, I like one? it and I don't like it. Well, um, fix it if it's bad. I, can this be a therapy session? Should I get on my couch mm. for a second? Okay, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> Hold all right. the cat. So I was working on a job with Eric Roberts. Oh, God. Uh, oh, God. That <laughs> man. Talk about misogyny. <laughs> oh, was it misogyny? It was a long time ago, but exciting. Go on. So uh, can, you do, can you do me a favor? Can somebody grab the uh, transmitter over there? So I'll see your Eric Roberts and give you a Gary Busey. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's Gary <laughs> okay, Busey. I'll raise you, Gary Busey. So I got I got to put a mic on Eric Roberts and the you know the idea is that when I wire people I personally like to wire from the mic down. Sure. And so <laughs> yeah, I go too. up to him and I go to wire him and you know so like I introduce myself and I shake his hand and like just pretend that you're going to wire me. He goes mm -hmm. just just pretend that you're going to like do it. Start touching me He's and he goes okay. like oh. just just get the f and he just like he does that kind of thing and I'm oh like oh, oh oh okay okay all right here we go. <laughs> here we go. And he says, "No, uh, the way that you do it is you cut a coal, you you cut a hole in my back ass pocket, and you shove the transmitter in there, and then you put your hand down my pants, and you pull the cable through the back of my pants, and then you take it up and you take it around, but you start near my ass, and then you go towards my chest." That guy. And I was just like, I, I froze. That. I taught him that. You years taught him ago. that. No. Jeez, so I should hit you. No, I'm kidding. Jeez, I was, I froze. I was like, oh. I had to let the boom operator wire him. It was just the one guy. I was like, I can't do it, guys. Oh. I'm, uh. I'm shaking from this dude. Oh, that guy, he was struggling to get his lines one day, and turned and looked at me and was like, Do we? Do women even? Uh, are women allowed to boom? What? Yeah. Oh, what? snap. Yeah, he what? was in the what? heat well, of wait, the moment while he was acting. Which century was oh, this? Oh, it was a few Whoa. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this one. Yeah. Crazy. Um, yeah, I don't remember him being yeah. nuts. I think he's just a goofy guy but, with just a funny sense of humor. But he's a, he's a goofy guy. Know. What number was he on the call sheet? 47? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> enough said. Probably well, no, no, no. four or five, well, I think. I, I, but, I mean, I mean, still, I mean, as human to human, there's... It's 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 a microphone. There's no reason. It, it depends on how upset he was. Oh Although yeah, yeah. I can project the person. Well, I he wasn't upset. Like he totally wasn't upset. And he wasn't even like rude to me. But he, he was, was just, just like, no. Yeah, he was just like, no. You're gonna do and it my way. I'm gonna. I can see that I can rattle you. So I'm was. gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, that's what it is. It's about you know. Yeah. It was bullying a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes women so Tom Sizemore's that. like that yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Oh, no, I'm getting a taste of my own medicine today, guys. No, but it's another occasion where. The treatment of a sound person is similar. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, in coverage. <laughs> yeah. The only problematic respect. actor I've ever had was Tom Sizemore, and everybody knows oh. he he's problematic. Poor boy. Mm -hmm. He but showed up. Uh, he did. <laughs> Indeed. No. No. So what other tips yeah, can you give uh, Jana and the, and the listeners going? And I don't know if we have any questions. Good yeah, question I for Carrie and Mary. What is the last good movie that you guys saw? Thanks, Rado. Oh, I watched a movie, uh, oh gosh, I don't remember the name of it. Let's see if it's in my email. Over at, uh, at Petrushka and Mark's house. What was the name of it? Oh, 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 Seven Beauties. Yes, mm. that, Beauties. that one. Lena Bertmuller. Wow. Yes, it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> a bitch about, you know, the slate, the second AC in the slate, the first AC and telling you where to put the boom when it becomes slightly difficult. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, uh, so, but he said, I said, what do writers get irritated by? And his very first thing was, <laughs> she sold that script for how much? <laughs> he said, that's <laughs> the number one thing. Oh. And then the number two thing is actors that change dialogue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. And showrunners. He said the showrunner has the ultimate say. Yeah. Right, on TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 This wow. is true. Yeah. Crazy. I thought that was interesting. Well, so, yeah. Very good. Go. Well, guys, if you guys have any other questions, yeah, Petrushka did a whole study. Oh.